Happy holidays, everyone. It is my favorite time of the year. I am here to give you my bold predictions for the Fredericksburg area real estate market in 2023. It's not what you think it's gonna be. Stay tuned. Those of you who tune in quite often, you know that I do a bold predictions every single year. I typically do a bold predictions at the end of the year for the beginning of the next year. And I also do one at the halfway point. And I will tell you this, I have been spot on for the last several years that I've done this. And I just started doing this, I think back in 2018. Uh, so this will be my 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, my fifth year doing this. The only year that I was incorrect was my predictions for the year 2020. And that is because no one in December of 2020 predicted COVID. So I was off in my predictions for that year, but I've been spot on in my predictions for all of the other years. So barring any pandemic, war, major issue in the world, here are my predictions for 2023. Now, it's important to start when looking at the predictions. It's important to look at where we are now. And I think you'd be interested to know where our real estate market is right now compared to other years. Now, in other videos that I've done, I made it very clear that I am not going to compare the year 2022 to the year 2021. And that is because 2021 and 2020 were both highly unusual years in real estate. They were anything but normal. They were fueled by things well beyond supply and demand. Actually, it led to supply and demand challenges. Uh, but I am comparing the year 2022 to 2019, which if we just didn't have COVID, we would have just made a regular progression uh, to this year. So. Let's block out 2020 and 2021. Let's go back to 2019 and see how that compares to what's going on in the market right now. So January through November, so as of December the 1st of 2020, so far in the Fredericksburg area, we have sold over 6,800 homes. 6,800 units have sold. Now compare that to this time last year, we had sold over 8,500 homes. So you're gonna hear that sales are down 20%. And the number of sales are down 20% over last year. Now, this is because there were fewer homes that came on the market this year. Let's compare this to 2019. In 2019, just under 6,500 homes sold in the entire year. So we actually sold only 330 more houses this year than we did in 2019. Compare that to 2018, we've actually sold over just under 1,200 more homes this year than we did in 2018. So you can see that that 8,500 from last year is way out of whack we're still doing pretty well at 6,800 homes in the year. The other thing that has dramatically changed is the days on market. So far this year, the average time a home is on the market before an offer is accepted is 19 days. And those of you who have paid attention to my reports since July, you know that the days on market has slowly increased. So we started the beginning of the year with very few days on market. The average was five, six, or seven days. Now we're seeing average time on market is more like 19, 20, 23 days. And so the average for the year is 19. Last year at this time, it was 14. Last year at this time, it was 14. So in 2021, it was taking two weeks to sell a house. We kind of forget about that. But back in 2019 and 2018, it was taking 42 days to sell a house. That is very normal. That's actually better than normal as far as time is concerned. So I will talk about my pr prediction of days on the market when we get closer, but that can show you where we are right now. 
The other thing that's different right now is the negotiation room. So typically a home is listed and then we compare the listing price, that original listing price, to what the resulting sales price is. And the resulting sales price is a combination of the sales price and any closing cost credit that's offered. And we look at that ratio. So for 2022, sellers were basically getting 100, if not a little bit more than 100% of their listing price on active, um, on average. At the beginning of this year, it was a lot higher. Second half of this year, we were negotiating a little bit below the listing price, but on average for the entire year, if you put your house in the market for 450, you're gonna probably get 452, okay? Back in 2019, we actually negotiated a little bit and there was actually closing cost credit or the price was lowered a little bit, but it was only a two and a half percent difference. So houses in 2019 were selling at about 97 and a half percent of the listing price as opposed to 100%. Average in our area for the last several decades has been a 2.5% difference. The last thing I will comment on as far as stats are concerned is the median sold price in our area was $426,000. Compare that to last year, that is a 12 percent increase in the average price of a home. Let's compare that to 2019. The average price of a home was 310,000. So the average home has gone up $116,000 over these last three years. Okay, that is a lot. But we went through a very long period of time, 2007, eight, nine, and 10, when houses were losing value like crazy. If we look at a chart and we just continue to go regular routine house pricing increases over the years, we are actually less than where we should be right now, okay? So I will get back to that in part of my predictions. Inventory is one of the things that is a challenge and has been a challenge. And one thing you're hearing is inventory is increasing and it actually is increasing, but I'll tell you this, it is still not enough. So as of December 1st, we had 974 properties on the market in our area. Compare that to December 1st of 2019, we had 1,435 houses on the market. We basically had about 500 more houses on the market then than we do right now. So you can see that we do have a challenge um, with our inventory. Right now, our supply and demand, we are at a one and a half, 1.7 months worth of supply on the market. So what does that mean? It's gonna take 45 days for everything on the market right now to sell based on current demand. That is a seller's market. We have had a seller's market on average this entire year. Now, my advice to my clients going into this new market, because we've been in such an extreme seller's market for so long, we really need to go into this new market with the mindset that it's a buyer's market. And the reason why we have the mindset that it's a buyer's market, because we need to get back to that mindset of we will be negotiating we will be talking about repairs. We will be having inspections. We may need to give a closing cost credit, get back to the dialogues and the negotiations that we had during a buyer's market. But truly it is not a buyer's market because there are still fewer homes available than buyers out looking. Why are there more buyers out looking than houses on the market still to this day? The answer is this. The millennial generation are out buying houses right now. And over the next two to three years, a huge percentage of the millennials will be buying homes. They've gone a very long time without buying homes. And why is that? It's because they saw their parents lose their homes in 2007 and eight and nine and 10. They saw the pain that being upside down in a house can cause, and they don't wanna deal with that. 
But why now? Why are they going to be a huge part of our market going into 2023? The answer is rent. Rents have increased so dramatically that in the Fredericksburg area, it is less expensive for one to own that home and pay the mortgage, even at these higher interest rates than they were a year ago. It is more expensive for them to rent that home than it is to buy that home. And they see this and they feel like every month when they write that rent check, they feel like they're throwing money away. In our area, we have a huge amount of rental properties that are being built. We will always have a huge demand for rental properties. But with even more properties being built, these apartment complexes that are going up, some of those places are more expensive than a single family home rental. And a single family home rental is more expensive than a single family home mortgage. So if someone has some down payment, they have some cash saved up, they have good credit, they could buy a house far cheaper than rent. And that is why the millennials are gonna be out buying houses. So be ready for that. So here are my predictions for 2023. I just got, went over where we were, the numbers from this last year. Here are my predictions for uh, the next year. And what I did is I went back in time. I actually went back in time up to 10 years to look at these curves, to look at the ebb and flow of the market, see the trends, see the patterns, see where everything is. And I also bounced my information off of the predictions that the National Association of Realtors has put out for this coming year. And you'll be very surprised that my predictions are very close. So uh, Mr. Dr. Yoon, Dr. Lawrence Yoon, you know, when it's time for you to retire, you may want to call me because I think <laughs> I think I have a good track record as well. So here are my predictions for 2023. In the Fredericksburg area, we are going to sell between 6,000 and 6,500 individual homes in the area. Um, that is actually down between five and 12%. So if you average that out, that's about that's down about seven, eight uh, percent for the year. So you're gonna hear sales are down quarter over quarter. That is the prediction and that is what it's going to be, okay? We are gonna be okay. We're gonna just kind of go back to 2019 levels in 2019 was a great year. The median sold price in our area is going to basically stay the same, if not go up, maybe only two and a half percent. So right now it's four hundred and twenty six thousand. My prediction is it's going to be right about that four twenty five to four thirty five by the end of the year. But what it is not doing is going down. OK, so your investment in your property is holding firm, if not going up a little bit. So that should also be an incentive for some of you to look at buying investment property. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Days on market, that's gonna get back to that 40, 45 days on market timeframe, okay? And that is such a huge change from what we saw at the beginning of the year. And the reason why the change feels painful is because the change happened like that. We went from seven days on the market to 21 days on the market in just a matter of months. Normally things like that take quarters and half of a year to make changes like that, but we had a huge change. But it's gonna take about 40 to 45 days for a home to sell on average. Now that means some are gonna sell in a weekend and some are gonna take six months. That's just the way it's gonna be. But if you're thinking about selling this next year, you have to be in the mindset that you need to start the process sooner than you realize. It is a blessing if things happen faster in this next market. It is awful if things do not happen according to your timeline. So if you know you're getting ready to move, you know you're being transferred out of the area, we need to start these conversations earlier in the year than you expect. My recommendation is we need to start talking no, no later than four months prior to when you need to move, okay? The other thing is negotiation. I do see homes selling for about 97.5% of the listing price. What does that mean? That means either the sales price is about 2.5% lower or the sales price is about the same, but there's a credit back to the buyer 
but in essence, the seller is getting about 97.5% of the listing price of the home um, as their net sales price in the end. That actually is a very normal ratio. We are going to see a seasonal real estate market, which is what we normally see in our area. What does that mean? Our seasonal market is heavy, heavy, heavy in the first half of the year. So coming into January, we're gonna to start to see more listings coming on the market. We're actually gonna see more contracts being written, more buyers are coming into the market as well. We're gonna see the peak of listings coming on the market in April and May this coming year. And we're gonna see the bottom of new houses, new listings coming on the market in November and December of this coming year. The peak of buyers writing offers on houses is going to be the month of May. It's going to be the month of May. Now, if you go back in the past and you listen to news reports, they talk about how July has the most sales ever. Those were contracts written in May and June, okay? So my mantra for my clients is, we've got to get your home on the market by the end of April, and our goal is to get it under contract by Memorial Day. That results in probably the highest price that you can get for your home this year, okay? For a buyer, the peak amount of listings on the market is gonna be April and May. Now, if you get in there and get ahead of the game and you make your offer in April, that would be awesome. So let's start looking. Let's start looking in March and know that more will come on. You just can't have the fear of missing out. You can't have the fear of missing out that something might hit the market in June that you'd like better. When you make the commitment to buy, you just make the commitment to buy. But I think if you bought in April, if you made your offer in April, you're gonna be closing in May with a little bit of equity because I think the values will probably go up a little bit between April and May. The lowest number of buyers in the market is gonna be the month of December, and that is very typical. Um, many times, uh, the time when we notice things are changing is come August, but I think June, June is when there are gonna be fewer buyers in the market out looking. That's why the mantra is, let's get it under contract and close in June. Worst case scenario, under contract by the 4th of July. And then the second half of the year just declines, honestly. Not in price, but in activity through the end of the year. Agents. It's my prediction that there'll be a 20 to 30% decline in the number of real estate agents in our area. That is both good and bad. The good part about it is the folks that were just getting into it as a hobby or really not taking it seriously or really aren't doing a good job or haven't sold anything in a while, they're gonna decide, you know what, I'm just gonna not spend this money anymore and I'm going to send my license back. It costs quite a bit of money to keep your active license and if you're not selling anything, that's kind of tough. So I think 20 to 30% are gonna drop their membership. The good side of that is the folks that are sticking around towards the end of next year, these are the pros. So when you're picking an agent to work with, you're gonna be working with a pro. And this is a pros market. And I can go over why that is a little bit, uh, but you'll be working with a pro this coming year. So uh, get excited about that. I think teams are gonna be growing quite a bit this next year. And I have a team. A team is kind of a new concept to a lot of folks. It's been in the real estate industry for a very long time. Just so you know, as a consumer, there is no one business model for a team. There are many different business models for a team. The team that I run is basically called a teamerage, which is a new word I just heard, but a teamerage. So it's like we're a mini brokerage inside a bigger brokerage where each of our agents are independent, they have freedoms, they can market, they can work with their own clients, uh, they can build their own brands, all of that kind of stuff, as opposed to the traditional team, whereas this is the team leader and a bunch of minions that work for them. Uh, that is still in existence today, uh, but that's not how I run my business. 
and I see more teamer ridges coming about, and we have several of those in our area uh, that I really enjoy working with, to be honest with you. They're competitors, but they're great people, and we love working together all the time. So um, if you're curious to know about the team concept and how that works for you as a consumer, make sure you ask your team leader because there are different models. But teams are going to be more important because it's becoming more and more expensive for an agent to operate a real estate business. It's becoming harder and harder for a real estate agent to uh, build relationships and get leads to uh, buyers and sellers who are out there because there are fewer and fewer thinking about doing it. And the teams who've been out there and have been established for the long time and can leverage off of the 10, 15, four other teammates, that is why the teams are gonna be growing. And actually that's why it's better for you as a consumer to be working with a team. Finances, mortgages. I think we will not see anything above 7% at all next year. Now, if you have really bad credit, maybe you'll be getting more than 7%, okay? But if you have good credit, you have a down payment, I think you're gonna be seeing things below six, we're gonna be in the fives this next year, and we're pretty much gonna be there for a while. And I did another video going back and doing research on what interest rates were. Being around six, five to six, that's very normal. That is normal. That's the normal place where we are. Uh, so I think we'll be there this next year. We'll be seeing more loan assumptions. So our veteran buyers who can buy with a VA loan and a seller who has a VA loan, that buyer can just take over the VA loan of that seller. And that's called a loan assumption. And we've done four of those this year. Uh, so we can do more and more of those uh, coming into the new year. And I think most people are gonna be buying with the conventional loan product. And conventional loans, they even have mortgage programs with a 5% down payment, sometimes even lower. So don't think because you're getting a conventional loan, you have to have 20% down. You don't have to pay the mortgage insurance if you do, but if you don't have all of that cash, you might wanna use some of that cash to uh, buy your interest rate down a little bit, maybe pay for a closing cost, maybe make some renovations to the house. You don't necessarily need 20% of the down payment or, or of the sales price in a down payment. Transactions, trends and transactions. We are going to be in an environment where for a couple months, probably April, May, and June, April, May, and June, you may get multiple offers on your house. Multiple means more than one, okay? So you might get two and you might get three, but we're not getting 10, we're not getting 20, we're not getting 50. We might get multiple offers. But for the majority of the year, you'll probably get one really good offer that you and your agent will want to work with. That's why negotiations are coming back. You get an offer, it might not be exactly right, you can negotiate. As opposed to when we get 10, 15 offers, we're just looking for the best option with the least risk for you, and that's the one we're going with. There's no negotiation, you just, you, you pick one. But now we're going to have to negotiate. And even if you have two offers, you might want to negotiate. So April, May, and June, you might be getting more than one offer, but more than likely for the entire year, you're gonna be getting one offer. And those offers, even when you get more than one, those offers are going to include a home inspection contingency. They're going to include a septic inspection, a well water test, an appraisal contingency. We're gonna get back to those normal due diligence items as part of the contract. You also will be seeing requests for closing cost credit. So the seller contributes part of the sales price back to the buyer as a credit against their closing costs. And on average, I think we'll be seeing 2.5% there. So as a seller, when you're working out your budget, you need to plan to give a credit to the buyer. Please do not be insulted if you get a request to pay closing costs. There actually are some uh, loan buy-down programs that a seller has to pay for in order for the buyer to achieve that. They are very attractive. And if it makes your house sell, it makes your house sell, okay? So please expect to see a closing cost credit be requested as part of your offer, even in a multiple offer situation. And finally, brokerages. I see a lot of mergers and acquisitions getting ready to happen in 2023. Though I can't name independent company names because I don't know of any, 
And just looking at the business models that are out there and knowing the P&Ls and the profit and losses and how much it does cost to run a brokerage. I see the small, medium-sized brokerages having a pretty tough time. So in any brokerage, especially the large brokerages, we operate off of the Pareto principle. And what that means is 20% of the agents are doing 80% of the business. If one has a brokerage that's 20, 30, 40 agents, and we apply that principle, that means a handful of people are doing the business. And I'm pretty certain a handful of people cannot support the business operating and supporting 50 people when only five people are actually doing the business. Smaller brokerages that have less than 20 or the team ridges or the teams that are out there, most of those agents, the Pareto principle doesn't necessarily apply there. In a smaller brokerage, usually the broker themselves is a top producing agent and they have folks that help them along the way. Everyone is producing. Everyone is producing in that company. In the very large companies, only 20% do 80% of the business, but their 20% number is huge. So they're able to continue on. But it's those small to medium companies that are going to have a tough time. So we're going to see some mergers and acquisitions. So if for some reason your agent changes company, that's okay. Have a conversation with your agent. There are specific ethic rules that come about uh, when an agent changes companies. And one of those is the agent cannot approach you ahead of that move and solicit your business to move to the other company. So please have grace with your agents, but there will be some movements around. And if a brokerage were to close, uh, typically that brokerage will have an agreement and their agents will move to another brokerage firm. Uh, but your agent can um, uh, communicate about that with you at the appropriate time when it does come. I'm not moving. I met Long and Foster and my team and I were staying here. So in summary, take the information you hear from the news with a grain of salt. In comparing 2022 to 2019, we are awesome. We're doing really well. Forget about the last two years, okay? As a seller, your home value is going to hold firm. Now, you could have sold your house at the peak of the market which was back in April of this year, okay? April of this year was the high point in the market. But if you look at your home value compared to before COVID, your home value has gone up over 30%, over 30% in two years, okay? So don't get all bent out of shape because your house is worth 10,000 less than it was in April, okay? You've gone up 30% over the last three years. So you are doing just fine. We're going to sell fewer homes, the number. That's because there are going to be fewer homes coming on the market. The millennials are going to be out in the market and they're going to keep that demand high. And why are they doing it? It's because their rent has become so expensive. It makes fiscal sense for them to buy a house as opposed to rent. As a seller, you're going to be negotiating. You're going to be negotiating on the price. You're going to be negotiating in inspection repairs. We're going back to the regular negotiations that we've had in the past. We'll see the seasonal ebb and flows where we increase in active listings on the market and buyer activity until we hit about June and then it slows down for the rest of the year. So we'll see that. So have your house on the market by the end of April under contract by the end of May for the highest price and for the best chance of selling on the market by Memorial Day under contract by the 4th of July. And just so you know, a reminder that this is a pros market. There will be a lot of agents that will be leaving the business, but the people who've stuck around are the pros. They are the reasons why sales are going through. You know, when you have a willing buyer and a willing seller, and for some reason, the deal doesn't go through, 90% of the time, it's because the agents were weak. The people who are in this business are strong and you are in good hands and you will have a good negotiator and you'll have someone who can think outside the box to help solve problems that pop up all along the way. So this is a pros market. Be excited about the fact that the agent that you are working with is an absolute pro. Thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for my predictions mid-year this next year 
and I hope you have a great holiday season and I will see you in 2023.